Hi, welcome to CSC 351 Introduction to Data Science and today's lecture is about using Python for data science. So that will be um, uh, a different lecture altogether where, where I'll tell you about um, the libraries available in Python and I will give you a recommendation of uh, uh, the distribution that I want you to install but before that let's let's look at python right so why is python cool in general and why should we prefer python for uh, introduction to data science so hopefully you are aware of uh, xkcd.com it's a very cool site where you'll find web comics and interesting is this picture right here uh, which is kind of motivation for python so let's see and try to understand what do we have here so there is this guy who's flying and how how come this guy is flying uh, seems like there is some package uh, which is anti-gravity and that is written in python this guy knows a little bit of python was able to import that anti-gravity and after that he got that capability to fly well th that's interesting actually that's funny too but in a way it kind of uh, conveys the uh, importance of Python or uh, the cool stuff that Python is all right so it's an interesting conversation that is happening between these two guys this guy is asking like how come you're flying so this guy is just you know saying that you know I imported one uh, library uh, which is anti-gravity and that is letting this guy for fly okay so funny but yeah in, in most of the cases this is true uh, not for anti-gravity I'm sure all right so uh, let's look at uh, the the goal for this lecture what we would attain so here um, uh, we will look at the python uh, libraries uh, some python libraries which are very handy in doing data science but uh, we will be only uh, scratching the surface there is a lot that you have to learn and uh, i'm afraid i may not have time to cover every library in detail that is something you have to pick up as you're working on your assignments and uh, project. Uh, but yes, I'll give you some idea about some important libraries that we have, uh, which are very handy in data science. All right. So, well, I assume that you have some background in uh, Python. So it's not um, an introduction to Python course, uh, not a Python 101 course. Uh, so good if you already know a little bit about Python if not then it's not tough at all uh, You need to just start that right be enthusiastic and be ready to learn and there this is a cool site uh, Learnpython.org you can start learning about it from here uh, I'm confident that your learn a learning curve would be much better uh, Than any other programming language if you want to learn. It's very cool language very uh, Beautiful language, very easy to learn, okay, and very powerful as well. More so for data science kind of um, stuff. Now, what we will be doing um, in this course, and at least for this lecture, I'll convey some, uh, you know, message to you uh, through some examples, some cool stuff. I'll show you, and I'll tell you, like, you know, how cool it is, how simple it was to do that in uh, Python, and you know, if you use any other language. Or uh, like uh, Java probably you'll have to uh, you know spend more time doing it so another cool thing about um, Python is that uh, it's a very powerful language for prototyping and prototyping is where you have some system built uh, or you want to build a system and check that system as soon as possible right so you're doing an analysis on a data and you want that analysis to be done as soon as possible so that whatever you have in your mind you can communicate that to you know your boss or you know any other person right so prototyping is where you want to develop your system fast and you want to see whether your system is working or not and for prototyping python is an amazing language okay so now what i will say this is my recommendation okay so i recommend that you should be using python for this course introduction to data science csc351 but let us know if there is an any other language that you want to use uh, so that is fine too but 
our recommendation would be to use Python because uh, that's the language which is being used today uh, mostly for data science although there are people who are using R and other programming language like they might use Octave or they might use you know, MATLAB or probably Java so uh, as goes my experience if you want to ask me then I'll say you know I've worked in C I have done C programming C++ programming MATLAB I've done MATLAB is very similar to Octave so I know you know about Octave and MATLAB as well I have spent decent amount of time uh, doing uh, R programming as well and then after that I came to Python and believe me I found Python the coolest thing all right so if you want to ask me I'll say yes uh, do Python all right so when you're doing uh, programming in Python then there are a number of ways in which you can do it but again I'll recommend you to use the anaconda distribution uh, for Python uh, which is very very popular in data science community so I'll say that you should go to uh, www.anaconda.com and then you can download um, um, this anaconda and you can install so let me give you a kind of a demo because what happens actually is that this website keeps on changing so when I downloaded my own uh, Anaconda for my uh, machine uh, it used to look very different but now they have changed the website a little bit so let me take you to the browser and you should say https uh, I think I have 3d here https and uh, and uh, conda So it should take you to uh, the Anaconda web page. Uh, let me try Anaconda.com. The same thing, okay? So here is this Anaconda web page, and from here you should be looking for. Okay, forget about that. This worked. You will go here and you should look for individual addition and go there and then uh, it's asking you like what do you want your data science toolkit so it's saying how popular this has been with over 20 million users worldwide open source individual edition okay so develop for solo practitioner i think that's what you are just press download here and once you say download it will start downloading uh, this installer for you so let's press that so when you do uh, the download thing now you here you have the options so if you're working on windows machine or mac machine or linux you need to pick uh, you know the installer as per your your operating system so since mine is this um, uh, windows and i want python 3.7 so please use python 3.7 because that is the most recent uh, i would recommend 3.7 then 2.7 so when you click this guy then you know it will start um, downloading the package i will not download right now because it takes a little a little bit of time and i already have that downloaded so let me take you uh, to this thing right so you can see that it was downloaded at 1 pm today and today is uh, you know 5th of june 2020 and this is the installer so when you click this guy it will start installing you have to uh, you know uh, say press next 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 and options are very very simple and hopefully you'll be able to install that okay so now let me show you one more cool stuff uh, yes so once this thing has been installed right so it has been installed what I should do uh, this is for windows the demo that i am giving you is for windows i should go right here and i should say cmd that will open my command prompt now from there i will go to the directory where i want to walk in so i have created a directory uh, in my c drive which is csc351 i'll go there all right so after cleaning the terminal what i need to do in order to run the ide uh, which is um, very popular 
with Anaconda. It is uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I should be typing Jupyter Notebook. All right. So when I say Jupyter Notebook, it will take a while and we'll open uh, this thing right here. Okay. So now uh, my notebook is open. So here I have some demo which I'll be showing you during the lecture. So what you have to do is just click one notebook and start programming there. So what I should be doing is let me uh, create one new notebook. So in order to create a new notebook, you should go here and pick Python 3. All right. So I did pick here and this is where you have to program. All right. So you can do interesting, interesting stuff and probably you'll start doing that soon. And if you have uh, your assignment or project already uh, posted, then probably you should start working right here because it's a lot of fun uh, working in a notebook. So here you can save your notebook. I will say uh, class demo. All right. So that's the name of my notebook. And if you go back to my home page, you can see a lot of notebooks that I have opened. So this new notebook that I have opened, I'll be writing some, you know, cool, uh, some, some stuff that I have to demo. So uh, let's start with a simple uh, program like list. All right. So list you can create in Python by putting some numbers. Let me put 12.5, then uh, minus 13. I can put a character A and then I can put a string here. Uh, so welcome to CSC351 and then 22. All right. Now, once you have written uh, a you know a statement in python now the point is you have written that in a cell this is called a cell right so you program in a cell you want to run that so how should we run we need to run that by entering uh, by pressing shift and then enter all right so when you did, did shift and enter that means this was fine it's running and you did not find any error if there was an error you should get that here so if I want to see what is there in my list, I'll type this list and shift and enter. All right, so you can see uh, the content of my list. If you want, you can do print as well. All right, yeah. So this is very cool actually. Uh, whatever you know in Python, you have to type that here in cell. And the good thing is that you can run a part of your program in each individual cell. So assume that you are writing a big program, uh, that might take hundreds of lines and there are multiple tasks involved and if you feel that the part one of your task is complete you want to check that then probably you can put the code corresponding to the part a in one cell and run that and make sure that this is running all right so this um, development phase is very convenient here very much interactive if you finished a part of your program, just type that on a cell, run that and make sure that it is working. So now let me try some, uh, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, I think when you say len, it should give you the length of oh, the list, right? Yes, uh, there are five elements in there. What I should be doing here, let me say five. All right. So my intention was clear right so i was i'm trying to access the element that does not belong to the list reason being i wanted to uh, to have some compiler error and want to show you how will this uh, this compiler error show up on your uh, notebook so here you can see right if there is a message if there is a compiler error then you can see uh, you know the result just after the after the you know the cell that you're running if you change that to some meaningful index then print oh sorry it should be list list two and here i should have list five all right now now it is meaningful right index error it says that the index that you're putting here is beyond the length of your list all right so that that's the message it's very very cool stuff now um let me uh, there are a lot of things you'll learn actually you have to practice 
the more that you practice more you learn and the more you'll enjoy if you have to insert you can insert a cell here so I have cell right here I can use this cell either for writing a code the way I have done here or I can change the nature of the code and I can write uh, change that to a heading all right so I'll say okay let me write some heading this is for class demo basic python stuff all right so what happened now this is no more um you know um, a cell with the code so you can change you can change the nature of the cell you can make that markdown for your comments statements all those things or you can leave that as code or else you can use that for heading so a lot of stuff you can do with your Jupyter notebook or ipython notebook okay so this is something uh, i will encourage you to try so what you need to do is go there download the anaconda uh, distribution of python and uh, you need to figure out which machine you're using and install the appropriate version all right so with that thing let me take you back to uh, my lecture slides all right so that's it um, okay so anaconda is a free open source distribution of python and r as well we are using python and then uh, uh, the advantage actually uh, that we have let me see if i can go back to uh, this guy right here yeah this is this is the thing right so uh, with anaconda you have all these packages right you have numpy which is the most important component of uh, uh, the the, uh, the python um, you know sci, sci, um, the scipy uh, scipy is the python library that we use so it's a very uh, important component of uh, scipy and scipy we will be using scipy is right here in our data science so these things that you are looking at right here they come um, by default with uh, uh, with this thing uh, anaconda so you don't need to worry about installing these things matplotlib is very important right because uh, if you have to um, uh, do some plotting uh, you have to do some visualization then that visual, uh, visualization is very cool with this uh, library which is matplotlib and numpy is very important for uh, uh for and uh, and dimensional arrays uh, i will show you some demo today uh, using numpy uh, and if you want a spider you can use uh, that as well that is also um, you know that also comes with anaconda package uh pandas are very important you'll have a look at pandas today as well all right so a lot of cool stuff that you need uh, Jupyter notebook I just showed you that all comes integrated in anaconda so you don't need to worry about installing those things okay yeah good now back to my lecture slides so we were right here so Jupyter notebook ID I, I just gave you a feel of how this ID looks like all right now uh, let, let's start you know uh, with the data science and that too using uh, python when you're doing data science using python then what are the different uh, tools that we have and what are the different stages involved so although the heading of this lecture slide is data science with python but these stages that you're looking at in the top i mean these balloons or circles whatever you call these are conventional stages which are involved in a typical data science project uh, even if you're doing that in any other language all right so the reason why we are calling it data science with python is that we have uh, you know these boxes right here and these boxes are having the name of those libraries that we will be using for each of these stages or the steps that you may like to call in the data science process so okay so what's the first stage in data science right uh, so uh well data science without data is impossible okay so we need some data so if you remember probably my second lecture was about data science like what is it and uh, you know i gave you some examples of data and the data was about 
baseball players uh, and then the data was about movies we had data about taxi rides and all so the point is that in data science we get the data uh, we try to um, you know understand the data by looking at what uh, what are the different properties of the data that are, that is available to us and then once we understand the data and its fields then we try to understand and then we try to come up with some questions like you know what can i ask from this data set right so if you if you remember when we were uh, working on on the on the baseball data set then we realized that you know since we had the information about each player being left-handed or right-handed and the information like when they were born and when they died then because of the fact that we had this interesting information of being left-handed or right-handed and the information about when did they uh, when were they born and when did they die then we could ask this question like can we say anything about the about the you know the number of years a person who's left-handed is surviving or living versus the person who's right-handed is living right so the point is we need data and when we when we get data then only we can you know think about uh, some questions that uh, that uh, we might ask for that data and probably we'll, we'll think about some solutions like how to use this given data to answer that question okay so 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 the reason uh, the, the reason of all this discussion is the importance of data data is the first thing that we need when we are doing data science all right okay so well you got the data all right you were lucky and assume that the data was available on on on, on some website and you just uh, it was in csv format and you went there there was a button that said download you download it and it was csv which is comma separated you downloaded it and now you want to move on to the next stage so the problem about data has been solved now very uh, rarely you will find a data which is perfect and now i should be telling you what is perfect when you get a data actually then the raw data may have a lot of problems it may have some missing information it may have some uh, outliers in the data it may have some noise in the data right so before we start processing the data there is a stage which is the second stage in our figure right here that is called pre-processing all right so in the pre-processing stage of data we would like to clean the data we would like to remove the outliers we would like to you know uh, somehow um, remove or somehow put some values for the missing data right so there are a number of approaches to deal with the missing data uh, i will not go into that detail right now but taking care of the missing data is also a part of data pre-processing and then uh, very soon you will i mean uh, learn in this course itself that um, some machine learning algorithms are, def are defined for numeric data now if you want to apply that approach to a text data then how should you do it because text data is not numerical right so there are some ways in which we uh, pre-process the text data and convert that to numbers so that finally we can apply and that uh, algorithm that machine learning algorithm on text data all right so all these things uh, are, are um, classified into data pre-processing you have the data you want to clean it you want to pre-process it in such a way that it is ready to be fed in in the next stage of the modeling right you have an algorithm and you know that this is a great algorithm but the requirement for that is that it can only take numerical data but i have text data right so there are techniques which converts uh, the text data into numerical data all right so that will be uh, something which we will do in data pre-processing all right so well we spent good time uh, say uh, you know we spent a couple of days in getting the data I spent three days in data pre-processing so after spending some five days we are ready now 
you know data is clean everything looks good to us now we have to do the next stage but data is very interesting we want to build uh, a, a statistical model or mathematical model machine learning model uh, on the basis of the data which we may use for doing some predictions for some forecasting right so as an example i think i, I gave you this example in one of my previous class assume that you have been given the the, the data which is about emails you have a bunch of emails and then there are some emails which are uh, labeled as spam and the other uh, emails are uh, labeled as non-spam now you can use a classifier we'll learn about classifiers but just assume that you have an algorithm which learns from the data uh, that which email is spam and which email is non-spam right so you'll have to train your algorithm on the given data which has spam and non-spam emails now, once you have designed a, a model, once you've trained that algorithm on the data, uh, which is email data, now you would like to classify a new email, which I'll give you uh, as spam or not spam. All right. So that's the third stage in data science, which is about analysis and modeling. Given the data, which is clean and probably labeled, now you can build a classifier on that. Okay, and this classifier would be a machine learning algorithm which would have learned from your data uh, that you have pre-processed now and then after you, you do the analysis and modeling and your model has learned it, now it is ready to uh, do the uh, predictions. Okay, so that's the third stage in data science which is analysis and modeling. And then the final stage that you're looking at is evaluate and present. So this will be something, you know, you can think about as your uh, final project presentation for data science course, right? So you'll have a project uh, which will be given to you. And in the project, you'll have to design, um, uh, say, a, so let's assume that you are designing an algorithm to uh, classify spam versus non-spam emails. So you did all the hard work, you got the emails, you pre-processed and then you, you mm, trained a classifier on that and now you are ready to present and uh, we are ready to evaluate you, right? So what's the, the last stage involved? In the last stage, which is evaluate and present, that's where you will show us the performance of your algorithm, how well your algorithm is performing, how well your classifier is performing. Is it giving the precision of 80% recall of, uh, you know, 70%? So these are some measures which evaluates how good your algorithm is. Okay, so that's the last stage. Last stage is when you have done all the hard work, your algorithm or the model is ready, and you now are ready to show the performance to, uh, to the people who are evaluating you. Okay, and you should be ready, ready with a presentation. Cool. So these four stages that I've uh, discussed right now are the general stages of data science. Getting the data, pre-processing the data, doing the analysis and modeling, and finally evaluating and presenting your result. Now, let's discuss about the uh, Python libraries or packages which will help us in this process. Good. So let's start with the first stage, which is getting the data. Now, uh, the beautiful soup, which is first in my list, is a library which is very um, cool uh, for scraping the web. Okay, so the web scraping is a very, in, a very good skill to have. Uh, that's personally uh, my opinion uh, because uh, you have, uh, you know, a lot of data now which is available on the web. All right, so when most of the data is available on web and you want to do some uh, analysis on that data, then it will be very, very time consuming to do that manually. How will you do that manually? It is up to you, right? But uh, that, that will be very, very time consuming. The best way is to learn scraping the web. Okay, so that's an interesting skill to have, as I said. And there are some packages that allow you to scrape the web. Okay, and beautiful, beautiful soup is one. Similarly, you have LX, uh, ML, you have TweetPy. Uh, now, TweetPy is a package which will help you in scraping Twitter. 
so a lot of cool stuff has been done uh, using uh, uh, Twitter data like the most common thing is sentiment analysis so if you have the tweets uh, then using the tweet you can uh, uh, you know predict whether the tweet is uh, positive negative or neutral so these are the three kind of sentiments that people kind of you know evaluate from from the tweets so the point is that when you're doing uh, some even the sentiment analysis on the Twitter data then you might like to uh, you know get the tweets and if you're thinking of um, scraping Twitter TweetPie is is one of the way to go about it right so it's a very handy um, library in Python then comes pandas excuse me so pandas are very very powerful libraries and um, you will have to use pandas and you would love using pandas so pandas they also have a very cool feature of uh, uh, you know importing the data right so I'll do an exercise on pandas today uh, and I'll show you how cool it is to pull the data using pandas if you have the data in CSV uh, which is comma separated or tab separated you can easily pull that using pandas so pandas are again very very um, popular and very very strong uh, libraries that we have in uh, in python and it's very important for a data scientist so interestingly you will see that you know i was just discussing uh, the first stage which is about getting the data interestingly in the pre-processing stage again you have pandas right so we have some functions in pandas which will help you in getting rid of uh, uh, some missing values getting rid of NAND values not a number kind of thing right so there are there is a lot to learn in pandas so uh, if I say that it may easily take some two or three lectures to just explain pandas then that won't be too much all right but unfortunately uh, in this course I will not discuss or I will not spend one lecture on pandas all right so probably maybe one more lecture on uh, um, data science and Python and then I'll move on to the you know next uh, probably um, theoretical stuff okay so that was about pandas this uh, another um, library called NLTK is it stands for natural language toolkit right so natural language means the language that we speak uh, an example of a natural language is English similarly we, we can have other language also uh, which belongs to NLTK which is natural not NLTK natural language so the natural languages if you you ask me like what are the natural languages I'll say English French Chinese uh, you, you know German um, Indian right so these are all natural languages now uh, so if we have to uh, do some analysis on natural language so how do we go about it right so we will have to pre-process it we will have to probably change uh, the text into numbers right so that I can apply some um, machine learning algorithm which uh, works on numerical data all right so NLTK is a cool library that has some very very powerful uh, functionalities which we apply for natural languages okay so now we have scikit scikit is again uh, a very powerful library we have matplotlib matplotlib is used for plotting all right so uh, when once you're done with pre-processing then the next stage is your modeling so for modeling we have numpy is a very powerful uh, library in uh, uh, scipy um, or what you call framework and that's the that's the um, that's the lowest level uh, in the scipy um, framework and uh, that has the implementation for n dimensional arrays and that is very efficient very fast and the remaining uh, components of scipy uh, software stack are built on top of numpy so I have two interesting figures I'll use that to explain what I'm trying to convey so numpy is very um, very very powerful uh, library uh, that we will be using and uh, these 
pandas are in fact built on type on top of numpy and numpy is a very efficient these have been implemented in the programming languages a language like c and uh, fortran because of which it is very very efficient then you have uh, scipy uh, which is uh, called scientific python it has in uh, it has a lot of libraries which uh, supports us in uh, doing scientific computing using python then we have symbolic python simpy so i have a couple of examples on scipy and simpy so that will give you some feel about what these libraries will do in sk learn we have machine learning implementation we have implementation of machine learning algorithms which we will be doing uh, maybe in a week or so from now and we will be using sk learn when we will be doing a modeling right so if you know about um, some algorithms like linear regression or logistic regression these are a few things we will learn then the implementation of all those are available in sql learn then you have stat models package which uh, one can use for some statistical analysis statistical uh, you know uh, modeling and then uh, this was for analysis and modeling and the last stage is for your evaluation and presentation so for presentation you can use ipython which stands for interactive python so ipython is i'll say the same as jupyter notebook right so where you can uh, write your um, program interactively the way i was showing to you using different cells similarly you have the tools like bouquet and flask so flask is there to provide some web interface to your app all right so i hope that this thing has given you some idea about different stages of data science and some idea about different libraries in python and where exactly they fit in these stages of the data science all right so now uh, let's look at uh, each stage one by one and try to see uh, with the help of some example like uh, you know how cool it is to do these things in python with the rich library support that we have now uh, uh, we are looking at web scraping here um, because that that is one of the very interesting um, thing to do uh, for data when you want to get it from the web uh, so we have um, beautiful soup so what beautiful soup does uh, so i i will assume that you know how the you know the how are these web pages designed so uh, these web pages are designed using html and xml so now if you want to get the data from there right so the data is in html these web pages are, are in html and you want to get data from those those uh, pages which are written in html so beautiful soup is the library that we will use and there are other libraries as well but uh, i'm sticking to beautiful soup because i believe that is very very simple and is powerful too and uh, we mentioned it right if not then let's go over this one more time if you want to get the twitter data then uh, you would use probably twipy uh, okay so twipy is uh, a library which is built for um, scraping the twitter similarly if you are interested in reddit data you'll go go with pro and if you want to do some analysis of wikipedia uh, wikipedia then there is a package called wikipedia and then there is a stack overflow um, website which is uh, very popular and uh, technical people you know programmers i would say mostly they ask questions on stack overflow and there are people who would reply to the questions so if you have some question about data science you are struggling say uh, you have you want to use beautiful soup to uh, to scrape the imdb and when you're running it you're uh, you're having some trouble then you can post that question on uh, stack overflow and there will be people they will reply back to your questions so if you want to do something about the kind of questions that people are asking on stack overflow and you want to do something you know maybe you want to tag that question like whether this question belongs to the category of database corresponds to the category of data science machine learning right so if that is something you have in your mind then you need stack overflow data 
And for that, if you want to do that using Python, you have this Py stack exchange library which you can use. Okay, so what do I have here? Well, as an example, right, as a demo, uh, which will give you some idea about how difficult or how easy it is to scrape uh, IMDB. Okay, so we are interested in uh, scraping the IMDB and we want to get the information about top 25 movies of all times. So here, because of the space limitation, I could not accommodate more than, uh, you know, uh, Two, uh, two movies but uh, there is a link if you go to the that link you will be able to see all 25 movies okay so well uh, this example that I have is from uh, um, this web page uh, which is on medium and it's very interesting if you want to understand the detail of the program that I have right here I would recommend you to go there and read this article it's very nicely written Okay, so here, uh, what do we do, right? So, uh, um, we need to import some libraries, right? So, in Python, when you are writing your programs, or very often you need to import the libraries that you'll be using. So, let's have a look at that. For this task, we need pandas, the pandas library. So, how do we import? You'll say import pandas as pd. You need to import another library which is called request. So now, you know, um, it's not possible to explain every statement one by one because that will also need some background in HTML. And for for being a good web scraper, it helps if you if you have a good understanding of web designing. All right. But this is not to discourage you. This is just to tell you that, you know, to the extent that I'll be covering this code. All right, good. So you need to import pandas, you need to import requests, and request is a library which will help you in connection in establishing HTTP connection to the uh, web server. And uh, once you establish HTTP connection to the web server, then you can access the HTML uh, web page which you have to ultimately uh, parse in order to scrape the data. Okay. Now, the most important library here is Beautiful Soup. This Beautiful Soup is in PS4, um, you know, uh, library. So you should inform, you should say that from PS4, import Beautiful Soup. All right, then you have this uh, web link. And this is the link that corresponds to the listing of top 25 movies of all times. And uh, this is what you will be accessing with the help of uh, this request library that you have uh, imported. So request has uh, this get, get function. Using that, you will uh, get a response in R. All right, and this R is to be fed in, in the beautiful soup the library to create soup, which is a beautiful soup object. All right, so um, once you practice these things and once you use it for your project, uh, right, it, it'll, it'll, um, it'll get a lot easier. And it all depends on your level of interest to how deep you want to get into it. All right, the deeper that you go, the more confident you will be about it. Cool, so after that, once you have created this beautiful soup object soup, you can use its a function which is find all. Right, so what we are doing here, so this is where your Python uh, knowledge would be important. If you already know about Python a little bit, then this will help. If not, then please take some time, you know, uh, and it won't be, it won't take a, a while. I think in two or three days, you'll be able to reach to this level. So what are we doing here? Let me try to explain you a little bit. We have, uh, we, are, we have created an empty list. Uh, named movie title because what we will be doing uh, we will uh, you know uh, we will scrape this um, uh, web page and we have looked at the web page and we figured out that uh, the <clears throat> the title of the movie is an h3 heading all those things are very nicely explained in this you know um, in this uh, website from where I got this code so in h3 heading you have um, the title 
and using uh, using that information you need to provide that in the find all function of the soup object right so what you're doing you are getting title in soup dot find all h3 is the class h3 stands for the heading in in, uh, in html and then you have a class information which is lister item header and then uh, you will uh, use another function so the point is that there are some functions which are there in this um, beautiful soup object which you have to just call if you know where exactly that piece of information is then it's very easy for you to retrieve that so what's happening in each iteration of this for loop you are able to find out the title of the movie and you are appending that title to this movie uh, title list that you created the same kind of thing you'll be doing for genre list as well right so here you'll use soup dot find all just the way you had used in the previous case but here the genre information is somewhere else in the web page right so it is in the span and this is how you will have to access that bit of information right and once you get in genre right here you will use get text and then you will append that to the genre list right and why do we need pandas we need pandas just to create a data frame now what's a data frame I'll tell you about data frame later all right so let's not worry about data frame right now uh, because that has to come in, in in the next few slides so the important thing is that once you got the movie information in the movie title list and similarly the genre information in genre uh, genre list now you can combine these two columns to create the movie information so what we are doing here uh, so data frames are like table okay let me tell you some let me give you some information about data frame data frame is the very uh, basic data structure right? let me call it a data structure in pandas right so in pandas uh, data is stored in data frames or series series when you have a table with just one column or table with just one row whereas uh, if you have a table with multiple rows and multiple columns then that is represented as a data frame so what we are doing here top movies is the data frame which we are creating and how do we create we will use pd what is pd we imported pandas as pd right so you can import something and give it a name as well so we said import pandas as pd so whenever we'll have to refer to pandas we will say pd so that's the reason we are saying top movies is equal to pd dot data frame so pd dot data frame is the, the the function which will create a data frame for you a table for you and how do we create that for that we are using uh, the column heading which is movie title and in the that column we'll have this list all the values that we have in the movie title right and for genre we will use genre as the heading and then the genre list will be the content all right so when you run it uh, which i have in my notebook this is what you will see all right so it's so convenient actually it might take a few hours for you to figure out but after that you will get the information from um, the web in such a neat form and you can do analysis if you want to later on okay so that gives you a feel about uh, using a beautiful soup all right so let's go to pandas now how what are pandas how do we use pandas so you must have seen you know one statement where we are using pandas in the previous example now what are pandas right so panda a panda is a spreadsheet software for python excuse me now a table is called a data frame a one dimensional array of numbers is called a series right so this is something i was kind of trying to tell you that data uh, in pandas would look like just a spreadsheet for you uh, which is like a table right so table when you have multiple rows and multiple columns and if you just have one dimensional um, you know table then we, we call that as series okay good so What's the important feature of pandas why should we learn about pandas because it's very very convenient to load the data using uh, 
pandas. So if you have the, your data in a CSV or TSV file, then pulling that up um, in pandas is very straightforward. And now you have a number of options available in uh, the functions that are available in uh, in pandas. So when you're uh, loading a CSV file, then it will give you a bunch of options. So those options may include like what do you want to do with the missing values, what do you want to do with NANs, not a number kind of values, right? And what do you do? What do you want to do with the header? Do you have a header of the file or not? And if you if you see this is very important actually I got into this tr trouble few few months back so if your data is really big uh, say your RAM is some uh, 8 GBs and, and your data is 10 GB how will you manage right so the solution to that is that there is an option which is for chunks right so you can you can specify chunk size and chunk size by specifying ch chunk size you have an option where uh, pandas will not load all the data it will only load the data as per the information which you have provided in chunks so it will just load a part of your data in your ram and in that way you will be able to work on that data all right so that's one thing then there are other things as well like you have the uh, group by uh, function. So group by if you remember and if you had uh, a course in uh, databases and if you ended up doing SQL then you will realize that group by is a very important feature of SQL. So similar kind of stuff you can do in pandas as well. You can do group by, you have the feature of indexing, you can do slice and dice. Slice and dice is very important operation in uh, pandas and Believe me, if you start learning about pandas, uh, there will be uh, tutorials that will talk about slicing and dicing. Okay, and then merge operation. Merge operations are very similar to uh, the join operation that you may want to do uh, in uh, SQL tables. If you if, if you could uh, recollect something from your uh, DBMS course. So I have uh, a demo which shows merge operations. So uh, you'll be fine with that then uh, you have some other functions also like you can uh, you can um, compute mean you can compute median uh, in your data frame all right so there's there are a lot of features available in pandas so the point is you have to you know start learning start practicing and you will be very happy to learn those things so it will be a a main component of your assignments and projects I could I could, you know, I'll, I'll guess, right? Yeah, at least for data, if you have to load the data, you will go with pandas and you should go with pandas. All right, so what do we have here? Well, this is um, a code, right, which is showing like how can we load a data. So uh, this reference is for the data set. If you want to try, if you want to do the same thing, which I would encourage you to do, uh, you should get the data from here. This data I got from Kaggle. So um, if you follow this link, it will take you to the Kaggle website. Just download that data. And I do remember uh, renaming the name of the file. Okay. So if, if the file that you download is uh, weight, uh, you know, height.csv, great, you can use it. Otherwise, please re rename that. Okay, so how should I pull my uh, file in pandas? First thing that you need to do is import pandas, right? So this library is something you will have to import, otherwise you can't use it. So the first statement in your cell should be import pandas as pd. And then I'm calling my data frame as data. You can name it whatever you want to. But better, you know, if you give some meaningful name to your data frame. So how do I get this data? I'll say PD, right? Pandas, ha pandas have been imported and renamed as PD. I'll say PD dot read CSV. So read CSV is a function which will read from your CSV file. All right. So I'll say PD dot read CSV, and that's that's where I will specify the name of the file, and then it will, you know, put all the data in my data frame data. Now, uh, the the size of the file should not be too big otherwise if the size of the file is big then you'll have to give the options of chunk size 
now you got the data in data frame uh, uh, called data the point is how should I look at the data that I have right so there is this uh, function head what it will do by default it will give you the data for the top four rows of your file or your data set so if you want you can put 100 right here so if you say data dot had 100 then it will give you the top 100 records in your data frame otherwise if you don't specify anything then by default it will give you uh, the top five records okay so in this data uh, file in this file that we have we have the data about gender height and weight all right so the first um, row that we have in the file has been by default picked as the header okay so if you want to look at it it, it looks like a table to me right and there are um, I, I mean in this sample there are five rows and three columns but uh, if you have the full you know full file then yeah probably these are going to be much larger and I'll guess that the height is in inches and the weight is in pounds all right so this another there are tons of functions in pandas right so if I'm telling you only about two or three functions that doesn't mean that it's it's complete pandas I can't do that you know um, Honestly, I can't cover everything uh, about pandas because that's just one library. We have, uh, you know, tons of other libraries as well. Okay, and this course is a mix of practice as well as theory. All right. Okay, so let's look at the describe function. What will describe do? So what is data here? Data is my data frame. How did I create it? I called pd dot read csv and this read csv uh, function that I have pull the data for me from the file and I created a data frame named data now what is this data dot describe doing well look at the result so this describe function that you have in the pan library it will give you a statistics on on the on some features right not on all so here I had three features features means columns or maybe attributes if you're coming from database you will understand what is attribute attribute means the properties of the data so for this height weight database data that i have i have three properties of each record the gender of uh, the person the height of the person and the weight of the person now when you say describe then these two were numerical data right height is numerical weight is numerical and i can do some statistics on that so what's this count right so now i have the answer to the question like how many records do i have in this file so 10000 records right 10000 uh, records you have 10000 heights and 10000 weight the average is 66.367560 for height of which we technically we should call that as mean because we learned what is mean in the previous lecture and similarly the mean for weight is 161.440357 you have similarly the standard deviation you have the minimum value you have the maximum values and then you have quartile values sorry percentile values right so 25 percentile that should be first quartile then you know it should be second quartile and third quartile okay so uh, whether you look at percentile or quartile so let's not go to these details if you need that detail then I'll, I'll try to have that I'll have that in my lectures but it is up to your interest if you want to learn about quartiles percentiles please go ahead all right okay so that's the information about these two features of this data which has the data about um, persons uh, you know height and weight describe could not give us the information about gender because that is non-numerical data okay now what is it right so here uh, we are looking at you know the merge operation so i think i uh, i should take you to the demo uh, for one reason i did not show you how the jupiter thing works right did i probably i did if not, uh, let me close everything. Okay, I think I think I gave you that uh, that demo, right? So what do I have here for one more time? Uh, 
once you have um, uh, you know I don't remember exactly whether I did that or not so what I'll do one more time right there's no harm in repeating that yeah I think I did give you the demo because I had that error sorry about that but let me run that one more time okay CLS I have nothing running right here so Jupyter notebook okay so we have Jupyter notebook right here so let me run this beautiful soup thing that I had all right so it's the same code that you have in my uh, lecture slide if I run that you know then it will take maybe a few seconds and then you see the output right this is the mo movie title and then since we did not have a space here the genre you can see right here okay good so that was one thing and let me see what all I have here I have this scipy scipy thing will come later there is this another notebook that I have I want to uh, I want to show you this yeah right so what did I do I have a file with the name you know read high.csv okay so using had I can get this thing so when I do data that describe you can you know you will see all these you know statistics all right I'll skip these things this is about beautiful soup all right now this is important okay now well you know this is similar to what you see right here okay so what are we doing we are creating a, a data frame called a left and in the left data frame how do we create left data frame we will use pd.dataframe so this is a, a function I told you about which we will use to create a data frame and in that data frame we will have a notion of key right so these are going to be our key and this key is similar to the key concept that you have in uh, the databases and then uh, when we have three columns here key uh, the column a and column b for key uh, column we have the values like k0 k1 k2 k3 for the column a we have values a0 a1 a2 to a3 similarly we have the column b as b0 b1 b2 and b3 and then we are printing this excuse me data frame this is what you get okay that's the result a data frame which looks like a table it has three columns key a and b and you know it has four rows okay so let's create one more data frame which we will call as right and here you know we have the same value of keys the reason being we want to do something like equi join right so equi join this is something we do in sql when we have two tables and we want to join those tables on on the on a field right foreign key and primary key kind of thing we do so here for us it will be very easy because the key column that we have in left we have the key column in the right as well with the similar values you know k0 k1 k2 and k3 but we have two other columns here in in the right uh, data frame which is c and d all right so we are doing the same you know as goes the the function the function is not different it is pd dot data frame pd dot data frame uh, the first column is same second and third columns are different here you had a and b right here i have c and d when you when you run this cell you get the output like you know um key c and d all right here you had key uh, a b here you have key c and d now let's do a join operation equi join right equi join so how do we do that we'll use pd dot merge so merge is a function which will do an equi join between your two tables so you should uh, specify your left data frame which is right here your right data frame which is right here 
and you should specify like on which uh, column you want to do uh, the equijoin okay so we will say on key because this will match and once you run that you know you get the output right here okay so that is about the merge operation so these things are very simple actually you know um, and it will be fun when you do it and you will love it more when you have some deadlines like assignments or projects to work on and you start learning about it uh, so don't panic the message is please don't panic these things are really really simple and you'll find tons of material on the internet a lot of tutorials are available on the internet and so much so these documentations are also very very good very detailed very nice very well presented all right so here you, i got this reference from you know this website if you want to uh, go and look at that and in on this website they have you know a few other methods also um, i mean functions also you can do concatenate as well you can do left auto join right auto join so all those things are possible with pandas okay so now what we should do uh, let's move on to the second stage which is pre-processing so we have um, you know some packages uh, which are specialized in pre-processing a specific kind of data. Uh, so for numerical data, uh, you have NumPy and Pandas. These are good enough. For text data, we will be using NLTK, which is Natural Language Toolkit. Now, if you're working on a, the uh, data which, uh, which has images, then for image, we have scikit-image uh, package. Okay, so now this is an interesting thing about pre-processing. So if you are writing your program uh, using some notebook like Jupyter, then as I showed you, like you can write a, a chunk of code in one cell and that should be uh, independent, which you can run. Then pre-processing is something you can uh, run in one cell itself. And once you have done the pre-processing, you don't need to uh, rerun that uh, cell again all right so that's the point about pre-processing here pre-processing of the data should be done only once because uh, once you have pre-processed that data now the data is clean uh, you have it in the format that you need it uh, to feed into the model then probably you would like to save that in a file so that later on if you have to train that model again you will just use this pre-processed data Okay, so in that way, you won't be wasting the CPU cycles. You won't be re redoing that process over and over again. Because if you do that, you will waste your time. All right. So now here, this is a demo on uh, NLTK. So as you might have been noticing that for every library that you have to use, you need to import that first. So the same thing we are doing in this cell. We need to use NLTK. So NLTK should be imported. And that's the reason the first statement that you have in the cell is import NLTK. Then uh, for me, it was required. So I would say that you should also download this tokenizer, which is PUNKT. So uh, type the second statement, which is NLTK.download PUNKT. That's a tokenizer. And then uh, what we have here is a string that we want to um, pre-process a uh, pre-processing is very simple in this case okay uh, for other tasks more complicated ones that we will probably discuss in our next lectures the pre-processing would be more involved but right here it's very simple so what do we want we have a string here right so and in this string uh, there are two sentences and these two sentences are um, you know clubbed into one string and what we want to do, we want to tokenize. That means we want to split it into two sentences. So how do we do that? Well, an LTK has a function called a sentence, which is S-E-N-T, tokenize. All right. So what you should be doing, just call this method on the data, which is sense, S-E-N-T-S. So how do you call that? You'll say NLTK dot sent tokenize. And in the parenthesis goes this string that you want to tokenize, which is S-E-N-T-S. And what would be the result? This is the result. Okay. So what do we have in this result, right? 
I would ask you to answer this question. Excuse me. So, well, look at these square brackets, right? So, square brackets means list. And this quotation means it's a string. So, how did this output change? Now, this whole thing got changed to a list. And how many elements do I have in this list? I have one element, a comma, and the second element. And what are these two elements basically? This is string 1. That's the string 2. What does the first string represent? That's my first st uh, sentence. And the second string is your second sentence. So this whole string got, you know, tokenized or got split into two because we, had, we have two sentences in this string. Alright. So this is a very cool uh, and very simple, uh, you know, pre-processing that you can see involving NLTK okay not too complicated intentionally uh, we did not come with an example too complicated right now okay probably you may not work on NLTK if you are working on NLTK or natural language then yeah you need you should be ready to dive deep into it and learn more about um, first natural language processing and then NLTK all right, so now we are coming to the modeling, right? So we'll look at uh, the modeling packages which we use for modeling. Now, so what is involved in modeling, right? So let's get, try to get some very high level view of what modeling will involve. So modeling will involve making some um, model, right? Mathematical or stati statistical model, which means um, writing an algorithm and making that algorithm learn from the data. Right? It is up to you. If you want uh, to get the mathematical uh, um, definition of that, then it will say that making a mathematical or statistical model out of the data. And if you want to think like a uh, like uh, a programmer, then you'll say that you know writing an algorithm and making the algorithm learn from the data. Right. So that's what modeling will involve. Now, uh, SciPy, right? I mentioned to you SciPy, SciPy, which stands for Scientific Python. Uh, it has a number of modules in it, right? And the good thing is that it has a lot of uh, um, libraries which help us in uh, doing the modeling and analysis. And now, uh, the SciPy that you have, it comes in various distributions. So, uh, if you remember, I am advocating for Anaconda. Uh, you have uh, a similar one like Nthought, uh, but I have used Nthought as well. I have used Anaconda as well, but I believe that Anaconda is more popular. So I'll say uh, stick to Anaconda, but Nthought is also very similar to uh, Anaconda. And what are these? These are some distributions of SciPy, Scientific Python. Okay, so now this is interesting. Okay, so. I got this from uh, this guy, uh, Fernando Perez, and he's a uh, big shot in uh, data science. So now, what should we learn from this uh, this picture, right? So this is the software stack. All right. So what is the information that we are getting here? We have Python, right? So in the Python, the lowest level of the stack, right, which should be down here, but for some reason they put that. Uh, from top down, I would like to have that bottom up. But anyway, uh, uh, try to understand what I'm trying to uh, what I'm telling you. The lowest level of the stack is NumPy, and right on what is a NumPy? NumPy is the implementation of um, n-dimensional arrays, very efficient n-dimensional arrays, and some you know operations on those. And these are very very efficient, very very fast because these are implemented in um, C and um, uh, Fortran, right? So very, very powerful, very fast. Now, other other uh, libraries that you see, like IPython, which is interactive Python, similar to Jupyter, SciPy, Matplotlib, and SymPy, all these libraries are, are built on top of NumPy. All right, so inherently, inside the num, the SciPy, inside Matplotlib, inside SymPy, and IPython, they are all using NumPy, okay? And then you have these libraries like Pandas, uh, Scikit-Learn, right? You have Step Models, 
uh, you have Cython and all those things, Scikit images. These are all built on top of Matplotlib, right? So that's an interesting thing which you should keep in mind, right? Because this will give you some idea like where is NumPy, where is SciPy, okay? Where exactly the Matplotlib sits in this software stack. Okay, so now there's another picture. Uh, so those two pictures I'll say is are kind of related and they are giving you some view about scientific Python which is SciPy ecosystem. Uh, so in the SciPy ecosystem, um, the question is like what are the different modules and why, how and where they all fit in. So again, the NumPy, you're right, NumPy is the, the one that is at the bottom of this uh, SciPy uh, or scientific Python ecosystem. And then you have Pandas, which also use NumPy. You have Matplotlib, which also is kind of based on NumPy. Then you have uh, Symbolic Python, you have IPython, you have SciPy library, right? So all these, uh, you know, six components are very uh, important in SciPy ecosystem, all right? Okay, let's move on then. Now NumPy, right? What can I do with NumPy? So as I was mentioning to you, it provides a fast and efficient implementation of n-dimensional arrays. And then there are uh, different operations supported uh, for num and p arrays these include finding mean finding standard deviation finding median and not only that they have some uh, operations available for um, linear algebra also and now linear uh, i mentioned to you i think uh, in the beginning of this course that uh, we need some um, mathematics as well to understand to do well in data science and uh, we already went over the fundamentals of uh, statistics, probability and statistics, but there's another component which is linear algebra. This is also very, very important, but for the time being, we don't need it as in, as in when we reach to the point where it will be uh, required, I will cover um, the linear algebra as well. But right here, the reason why we are discussing linear algebra is that uh, in NumPy, you do have some uh, operations which uh, are there for linear algebra. Or you can perform dot products be between the matrices, uh, you can do cross product, and uh, not only that, you have um, the operations for signal processing as well, for something like fast Fourier transform, and so on and so forth, okay? So, the example that we have for NumPy is also very, very simple. Reason being, uh, uh, well, I want you people to be interested in doing this stuff, right? I don't want to give you something scary. Okay, so the the best thing is to start with easy and then, you know, from there move on and don't stop. Now, if you have to use NumPy, how should you use it, right? So as we have been doing it, we need to import this uh, library. How to do that? Say import NumPy as NP. All right, so how about this? Why not? take you to the demo so here you have the demo okay uh, scipy demo so what am i doing here well import numpy as an mp and then i'm creating an array a and in that array a let me make it bigger yeah that should be good now uh, let me see restart the kernel is the best restart Anyway, so uh, you you are creating an uh, a two-dimensional array which is a matrix. Uh, we are calling that as A. So how do you create that? You already import in NumPy and you call that as an NP, uh, right? That's the way we have been doing. We were importing uh, pandas. We said import pandas as PD. Similarly, you can say import a NumPy as NP. So hey, it is up to you whatever you call it. You can say NP1 or N or P, but very common people call that NP for NumPy. Then you will call this function NP.array. All right, so in NP.array, which is a function, you have parentheses right here. You will pass on the two dimensional array right here. We are interested in two dimensional arrays or multi list if you want to call that. 
So how is this two dimensional? Well, what do you have in the outer rectangle um, rectangle bra brackets? Uh, well, this outer rectangle bracket will um, declare one list for me. Okay, but what is there in this list? I have further two lists, right? List one and list two. The first list has elements two and three, which will define my first row. And the second um, um, list is two, two, that will define my uh, second row. So if I run this, right, by running that, I will get uh, my matrix, which is two, three, two, two. First row is two, three, and the second row is two, two. Okay, so we created uh, a two-dimensional array. Great. Now, we will try to invert, right? So inverse is an operation on matrix. So I believe the matrix should be square. Then only you can do inverse. And then there is another condition that I'm forgetting right now. Um, it's um, determinant should not be zero uh, as I could remember. Anyway, so what we are doing here, we want to inverse this matrix A. So how do we inverse? So for that, we will use the lin alg so this is linear algebra um, library of numpy so how do we call this inverse function for that we will have to say np dot lin alg which is numpy's linear uh, algebra library and right there we'll say we'll call this method which is inva all right so when you run this thing you get the output so this a value that you're looking at which is minus 1 and 1.5 1 and minus 1 this is the inverse of mm, the matrix A now the point is so how do you confirm that whether uh, I a i is the inverse of a or not right let's multiply these two if you multiply these two then you should get an identity matrix so how to do that well let's do dot okay so this dot is again a method oh, sorry not method i should be calling it a function which will perform the matrix multiplication where the matrices are numpy matrices so you say a dot a dot a period dot a i which is c and then you print c all right this is your identity matrix right so yeah we are done right so a very simple example of using uh, numpy uh, linear algebra um, inverse function by calling np dot lin alg dot inv okay so again the best way uh, to learn about these things is to do it yourself right it's probably just like learning programming okay if you don't do it yeah probably you won't learn you'll forget Okay, cool. So that's what I had right here. Okay, uh, I got these pictures from my um, uh, Jupyter notebook only. All right. So what do we have here? Let's do the overview of oh, overview of SciPy now. Previous slide was about NumPy. Okay, NumPy and SciPy. SciPy is built on top of NumPy. Okay, so uh, this contains this scientific Python uh, SciPy package that you have. It contains the uh, functionality for linear algebra as well, optimization, statistics, signal processing, and other special functions if you want to use. Okay, so now this is something that got me confused when I was preparing for lecture. You have SciPy.linalg, linear algebra. You also have NP. Uh, dot linear algebra why why do we have duplications right we have linear algebra package in uh, numpy we also have a linear algebra uh, um, you know package or library for scipy what's the difference do we really have these two separate answer is yes okay so why should we have these two separate it turns out that the implementation in scipy is even more efficient Right, so if you're concerned about efficiency, then I'll say that go with SciPy. Okay, for, for general case, you'll see the same result. But if for some reason you're concerned about um, the efficiency, then SciPy is the way. Okay, so you have some uh, optimization uh, uh, package as well. 
that is available in SciPy library. Uh, for statistics, you have package in SciPy stats. You have signal processing support as well. And if you if you want to use some spatial functions, right, like gamma function, you can use SciPy dot special. Okay, so now let's let's do something, right? Let's do an exercise. So this is an interesting exercise that involves SciPy, scientific Python. Okay, so uh, probably you know these law of motion equations. So here, let's try to understand law of motion, and then we'll think about implementation. A car's velocity in miles per hour at time t is given by uh, this is a constant plus ten times t. So if you remember the equation of um, uh, you know the velocity where the um, the final velocity which is v is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times the t then that's how you compute final velocity on the basis of the initial velocity acceleration and the time so i will map this equation to this um, formula that we have available where i'll say that uh, the initial velocity was 25 which is u v is something which is computed using this expression plus 10 is my acceleration and t is the time okay now the point is how do we find out the distance covered by this car in three hours all right so that's an interesting exercise that we have to do for that thing let me you know do some mathematics okay so after that we will look at implementation so i will use my pen and my favorite color is blue okay so let's try to you know um uh, let's recollect some mathematics from our high school or maybe undergrad right so how do we define uh, velocity right v is equal to uh, dx by dt i hope you know this much of calculation calculus if not that's all right don't worry too much about it so what is x here what is t here x is your distance Right, so what we are doing, the velocity is the rate of change of distance or displacement to be technical, right? If velocity is vector, then uh, your, uh, we should call it displacement. Displacement is vector too. So velocity or the speed is, let's call that speed is rate of change of distance with respect to time. Okay, now let's uh, do some cross product kind of thing right so what will he, what will happen you'll have dx is equal to v dt what did i do cross product okay v into dt come here dx come here now dx means uh, the the very small uh, uh, distance that one has moved right very very in fact very very small distance that someone has moved now when you have to find out the distance that is moved in a time uh, so what do we do uh, using calculus we should do an integral integral on left hand side which is same as integral on the right hand side so you want to do it uh, from time 0 to 3 all right so if that is x or the distance that you want to compute then it will be 0 to 3 0 to 3 we we do not know but what we will do we will call this velocity function and will integrate that right we will have to integrate that this velocity thing that you have written as a function and in the range from 0 to 3 all right so i hope what i've done should make sense right okay so that's the reason what we are trying to do is first of all uh, we have been given this um, you know, let me go back to the pointer okay we have been given this um, expression for velocity so what we will do we will uh, create a method or function I think we should be calling it function in uh, Python so we created a function called velocity this is how we do again your background 
Python knowledge will help here. If not, you'll have to look. You you'll have to look at it like how a function is defined in Python. So you say def velocity t is equal to I mean the colon. Then you return 25 plus 10 times t. T is the parameter that you're passing to this velocity function. And since we will be using integration, right? Integral. So I gave you this idea like why should we integrate because velocity is rate of change of distance or the speed is rate of distance or rate of change of distance with respect to time. So we will find dx is equal to v dt and we will integrate that from 0 to 3. Cool. So now since we have to do integ integral, we need to Im uh, import integrate um, package from scipy. All right, so you'll do import scipy.integrate and once you have done that, now you could compute the distance as distance is equal to scipy.integrate.quad. So that is the function that you will have to use to compute the integral when you're using uh, this, this function called velocity and you're integrating that over the, over the range from 0 to 3. Okay, and if you run that, if you print this distance, then you'll get the ultimate distance value. So let me run that um, on my notebook. So we did till this one, right? So I'm importing scipy.integrate. We have defined the velocity, and then we are doing uh, scipy.integrate quad. All right, and then you run this. So the distance that is traveled is 120, and then you might be wondering, like, what is the second value that we get here? Well, the second value is an error. So the point is, uh, the way this integrate works here, it uses numerical integration. So numerical integration is not the um, well. Let me put it this way. This numerical integration that we are using right here uh, uses some approximation and because of this approximation you always have some error okay so because we are approximating there are some functions that approximate when we do numerical integration so we don't get the precise value what you got is 120 as the distance and this is your error okay so this is our error in the computation of uh, the distance moved all right so don't worry too much if you're not getting uh, anything about it but at least you should try to do these things okay to get a feel about what functions do we have in different um, libraries and what are these different functions for okay all right so let's move on great so next what we have is symbolic python right so it was scipy now we are moving to symbolic python so what is the symbolic python about so it will help us in doing uh, symbolic manipulation in python so it will support differentiation integration and simplifying of the equations and it is required when we are more concerned about preciseness when we need the exact solutions right so here i have a very you know interesting um, demo for you so let's see right what can we do here uh, so we will import simpy symbolic python just the way we had done uh, in scipy and from symbolic python we are importing some functions which are sine and cos uh, so these are trigonometric functions that we are importing and then uh, from uh, simpy we also have dot abc from where we will import two variables x and y why? Because we are using x in the expression that we have to use. So what are we doing here? We are trying to differentiate it. We are trying to differentiate an expression which is x square plus x cube plus cos of x. Right? So this will boil down to doing uh, the analytical uh, you know, differentiation. That means the differentiation that we will be doing on a piece of paper by using the formula that we know for differentiation okay so it will do the analytical dif differentiation it will not do numerical differentiation okay so what will be the result if you run that 
what do you need to call you need to call this diff method which will do the differentiation and this diff is defined in sympy so you'll say sympy dot diff and then differentiate the expression that you have which is x square plus x cubed plus cos x and you want to differentiate that with respect to x what's the output well three times uh, right here right it is x cubed three times x square plus two times x and you know that the differentiation of cos x is minus sin x all right okay so then let me quickly uh, give you a demo of that as well right so here you go the same thing right i didn't do anything different and in fact what you have in the slide is from my um notebook from here interestingly you know you can do integration as well simplify dot integrate so what is it x, uh, two two times x okay it is two times x you are integrating that with respect to x so what is it it is x square right and if i take this okay let me run that and then i'll change it a little bit x square and if i make that x it should be x square by 2 all right so yeah cool stuff okay uh, just giving you some idea about what are the different possibilities how powerful these different uh, libraries in python uh, you know python are right so if you have anaconda installed probably you'll get most of these things and you know uh, you can try it out and a lot depends on the assignment that you are doing or the project that you are doing okay so don't worry if you did not follow some of these like integrate you might not need integrate and diff for uh, your assignment and project and your assignment might involve uh, most of the stuff from um, what is it <clears throat> from pandas and maybe a little bit about from matplotlib right so okay good and don't give up right keep trying and and this is fun exercise all right so now to the last part of this lecture this last part is about uh, the visualization so visualization means uh, would involve some plotting and for plotting we have a very powerful um, library which is matplotlib and this matplotlib has uh, support for scatter plots charts bar charts pie charts box and whisker plots plots lines so on and so forth right so it all depends on what you want to do if you have to make a scatter plot well use the scatter plot function in the matplotlib all right so what i have here towards the end is uh, just a cool um, uh, three dimensional plot where the, the the reason why i have it here is just to give you some idea like that you know uh, these kind of plots are also possible uh, in uh, in python right so here this is a little complicated uh, which involves some uh, where we have z uh, it is x y and z it's a three dimensional so z is computed on this sorry sorry about that this z is computed using this function which has been defined uh, so you don't need to understand everything in this uh, in this uh, visualization the message is that you can do cool cool plots okay so here we have x and y uh, our, our our independent variables are x and y which are being uh, defined as np uh, and np is numpy right so you have important numpy is an mp np then we are using np dot mesh grid and using that you have different values of x and y using these two extreme values which is uh, phi pi and phi m which we should have somewhere here phi m and phi pi what are these well these are some um, the range of values which we are generating using uh, a function lint space so lint space is again an interesting thing that you should explore it is a it is a function in numpy which would re uh, re return in values from 0 to 2 times np dot pi right so p pi this is the pi 3.14 thing and from here 0 to 2 times pi you are generating some hundred values okay these are all equidistant uh, similarly uh, phi dot pi is also the same thing okay so these are two arrays of values which we are passing uh, into np dot mesh grid 
uh, and whatever you get would be assigned to x and y and these x and y are being passed onto this function which we have written right here which is slightly complicated and the result is a cool plot like this it's a three-dimensional thing okay so this was my last slide but let me tell you a few interesting things about this website mat All right, so if you go to matplotlib, then there you have this documentation where you have, you know, a number of, uh, you can go to tutorial, in here you have different kinds of plots, right? You can um, look at a plot and see the detail, right? And can learn from those itself. Examples, let's go to example, right? So if you have this example, let's look at this one. So you can read about it like what are we doing here and it's so convenient right so what I should be doing uh, here you have an example given so you should try and understand what this each example is doing and one of the way would be to just copy this code on your numpy on your you know Jupyter run that okay yeah so you got the plot right so now play with it right change this code a little bit and see for yourself how will this change how, how will this change and probably for your assignments you might need something like this right so this is a figure where we are getting a plot this is about I think uh, about men and women uh, uh, this data could be about their you know age or whatever so the point is right here if you go to um, this matplotlib you'll find a lot of interesting examples of plotting which you could um, you know understand by looking at the documentation copy the code on your uh, notebook play with it and learn all right so that was it about this um, lecture on uh, python for data science I'll stop right here and I'll see you in next video lecture. Bye-bye.